In this video, I'm gonna be showing you 10 Figma plugins that we use almost every day that I think will help you save time and just more uh, polish your Figma projects so they look a little more professional um, and really just make your workflow a lot smoother. So all of these plugins are linked down below and every one of them is free. Um, there are paid alternatives, but uh, we don't like to spend money where we don't have to. So uh, hopefully you can just go ahead and add these into your workflow and get started with them today. So let's go ahead and jump into the first one. The first one we use is a plugin um, from Material Design uh, Icons. And so this is a set of, I think, 20 or 30,000 different icons uh, from the Material Design Style Guide. Um, and what I love about this is of course it's free, but it's also um, vector or SVG formats for the icon. So if I just click on any one of these here, we zoom in, you'll see it's actually a uh, scalable, once I take it out of the frame there, but the, the icon itself can be scaled up to as big as you want it because it's an SVG format. And we've looked at um, other plugins that maybe have better icons, but this, uh, this one provides those SV SVGs. The other ones are usually limited to PNG or you have to pay for larger sizes. Um, so we love being able to have that. And we use this plugin primarily in the prototyping or wireframing stage when we're just trying to get the layout of a design. Um, you know, maybe we're adding it to a button or something like that. And um, this is just really easy to quickly pull up and put it in there. You don't have to go search for an icon pack and pick one that's consistent because um, all of these are consistent with each other. And so you can search for anything, like if you needed a check mark, um, you can see there's a bunch of options. And you know, it's not an unlimited library, but it usually covers 80, 90% of what we need. And then, you know, we can always replace it toward um, a final design with a more custom icon if we need it. But for the most part, it works pretty well. The next plugin is from Unsplash, and if you don't know about Unsplash, it's an awesome collection of free uh, photos that aren't cheesy, um, that we use for a ton of our placeholders, and oftentimes we'll use for the final designs for our clients. But what this plugin does is it allows you to um, directly insert those images into your Figma project. So you don't have to go search on Unsplash, you can just bring up this plugin. And if you're just looking for a generic placeholder, maybe you want something uh, from nature, you just click on that and it's gonna auto generate uh, or rather auto insert that photo, just a random photo tagged with nature. So sometimes it takes a second, but there you see it's loaded in. And what's really nice about this is that the file sizes are not massive. Usually when you download a photo from um, Unsplash, you know, it's a professional uh, photo, so it could be anywhere between one and 10 megabytes. But these, once you export them out of Figma, are almost always less than a meg. Um, and we'll talk about compressing file sizes in just a minute. But you can see it inserted directly. Um, and one thing that's cool with this is if you would rather insert it as a background, what you can do is select an element and then you just pull up that plugin uh, again. And let's say you wanted something with architecture. What it's gonna do is actually set the fill of that element to be the image. So we don't use this a ton, but if that's something you do a lot, that's even faster. Uh, but you can also search for something if you're looking for a portrait. Um, this is great when we're you know, making a bio uh, section for a client's design. We don't have a picture from them yet, so we just kind of throw something in there, um, but they look pretty professional. So this just saves a lot of time and uh, it also will reduce the file size for you. The next plugin um, talking about reducing file sizes is called Downsize. And so what I've actually done here is, is uh, downloaded a picture from Unsplash. I've actually gone to the website and this is actually a smaller picture, but it's still one and a half megs. And if you wanted to reduce that, uh, you know, usually you would go through tiny PNG or tiny JPEG or whatever and compress it. And you have to, you know, upload it, download it, uh, bring it back into your Figma project. But this plugin, it's called Downsize. And when you run it, you can actually set the quality of the photo. So Generally, I wouldn't recommend going below maybe 40 or 50, um, but even if we just run it at 50 right now, it was one and a half, but you can see it's been reduced to less than half or just about half. So it's 65% smaller now. Um, and so if you're using a lot of images in your design, this will save you a ton of time. And for the most part, you're not losing a lot of quality. Um, obviously this is massive, but you know when you're scaling it down here, you might even be able to go lower to 30 or 40% quality. Um, I really started seeing a difference around that 10 or 20 mark, um, but it just depends on the size and 
you know, how big the photo was to begin with. But this has helped us reduce our file sizes a lot because we generally export all of our web designs into a high res PDF. And generally those things come out to be a couple hundred megs. And so this just saves a lot of hassle and time um, compressing that down the road. Another plugin is a little more um, creative, it's called Blobs, and this just will auto-generate random shapes for you. Uh, it's fun because this is a, a big trend that's uh, pretty popular right now in web design um, and just graphic design in general. But you can see there's, it's not super complicated. You got two settings here. Um, when I say make blobs, it just kind of generates a random shape. You can play around with that. If you don't change the settings and just keep hitting make blobs, it doesn't just generate the same shape. It's always a little bit different. Um, and you can go up on a scale of uh, one to 10 for each of these. You can see you get a little bit different, um, but these are nice because they're vector shapes. It saves you the time of having to use a pen tool and kind of come up with something. Um, and so most of the time within the first few clicks of using this plugin, we get the kind of abstract uh, pattern that we need and we're good to go. So that's a little bit more fun um, and might not be as cool in a, in a couple months or a year, who knows uh, with graphic design, but that's a really fun plugin. Another one is font replace. Now this is invaluable uh, for really quickly replacing fonts. And so if we bring it up here and let's say we select uh, the entire wireframe, I believe if you select it uh, or if you select the actual text and then run the plugin again. So let's do that. Now, now you'll see it's pulling in this mullish font and now you can search on the right uh, what you want to replace it with. So let's say you want to uh, change it to something like Beebus um, and you can just match up those weights. So bold, it's going to go to bold and we'll hit replace. And now you'll see all those titles have been updated on the wireframe. So we didn't have to go select each layer um, and we can really quickly switch it back if we wanted. Um, now we can say Beebus, go back to mullish, put it on bold, replace and we're back to normal. So this has been really useful, um, especially when we're on a, uh, a client call live and sometimes we just wanna make changes right in Figma. We can really quickly find all the fonts because sometimes you can't remember the font name. So just being able to select the whole, um, the whole frame or the artboard and see all the fonts listed uh, and then match up every weight is really helpful. You're not just changing the font for everything, you're actually changing the font and that specific weight. Um, which just helps save a lot of time. So one of our favorite plugins there. And then we have a similar plugin that will actually replace colors. This is called the color replace plugin. So these names are very obvious <laughs> what they do, but you can see again, if we just select an artboard, all those colors are coming in here and you can actually see the uh, opacity that each color is set to. And so um, again, similar situation when we're sitting uh, on, a, on a call with a client, they've often uh, wondered, you know, how easy is Figma to use? Like, can we change the colors? And I can very quickly jump in there and, you know, select the primary color and they say, maybe if we want blue instead of red, I can just hit one button and run that whole thing and everything's good to go. So uh, that's another really useful tool. And then uh, as far as as wireframing and using placeholder content. Uh, we use Lorem Ipsum a lot, especially when we haven't gotten to the copy uh, stage with our, um, you know, our copywriters and in, in the rest of the pro project. So using Lorem Ipsum is really helpful, but using the plugin allows you to insert it directly uh, into your project. So if we bring it up now, you can see that uh, it wants you to select the layer. So let's go to the title here. And let's say we just wanted like one sentence, we can just hit generate. And obviously there's already text in there, but let's just say I, I put something random and run the plugin. And if you're wondering how I bring up the plugin so fast, if you use the alt command P plugin on a Mac, um, it'll just bring up the last used plugin. So you don't have to go up through the window. Um, and you can set the words, the sentences or the paragraphs, but my favorite has always been the auto generate. And so if you click that, it's gonna fill the text box size with as many words as it can. So for example, if I create a text box on the side here and keep that selected, run that plugin and say auto generate, it just fills everything uh, or fills that whole text box with a ton of different paragraphs. Um, so this is nice, just saves you the time of having to go to um, the actual, you know, Lorem Ipsum website or just come up with, you know, placeholder text uh, and you can really control each, uh, the, or the, rather the amount, whether you use the words or the paragraphs um, or sentences. So that's really nice. And then we have another plugin we use um, 
for removing the background is actually called remove.bg. And this is actually a service here, but I'm gonna drag in my picture here, lovely self-portrait. And you know, in the old days, you would have to open up Photoshop and you know, kind of mask out yourself, re-export as a PNG and, and so on. Uh, this plugin, which is actually a website that happens to have a Figma plugin, allows you to literally click a photo and you just run it. There's not any settings and then you completely delete the background. And for the most part, it's pretty accurate. This isn't the highest quality picture. You can see it gets a little blurry around the edges, but you know, if you're scaling this down to a profile picture or something for a dashboard, um, or even just as a placeholder until you actually get a professional uh, designer to go in, or if you're later gonna go in yourself and use Photoshop or something like that, um, this really gets you 80, 90% of the way there. So that's saved us a lot of time in the past. Um, and often our clients uh, will give us photos that don't necessarily have great backgrounds. And we like to do uh, something like we had here with that background, um, with the gradient. Uh, and you can see that it's, you can also undo your changes, which is nice. So it's not like a permanent change in the Figma project. So you can always revert to that original. Um, and it works pretty well on a variety of subjects we've had, uh, like with a lot of hair, if there's a lot of long hair and random strands going on, it does a pretty good job of masking those out. So um, that's an invaluable tool to have. And then the uh, number nine, we have the image palette. And the image palette is cool because it will generate uh, a set of colors based on your uh, image that you drag in there. So I'm gonna go back and drag in this uh, parrot here. And if I just run that plugin, it's just gonna generate a couple of colors at the bottom based on like the primary and dominating colors from the image. So it's kind of captured that red and the, the maroon, the dark colors, the teal. And so this is a great way at the beginning of our project to start getting some cool color um, theme variations and um, oftentimes you get some great secondary colors so you can create uh, some cool, uh, you know, gradients or anything, whatever you're trying to do, just gets you some ideas uh, right inside the project, especially, um, you know, I dragged in an image, but if you already had images that you're trying to match colors to, um, or vice versa, maybe you're trying to pick colors and then match images to it, this is a great way to just see uh, this, the two side by side. And then the last plugin we use a lot is the um, Story Set plugin. And this allows you to, I'll bring it back up here, this allows you to bring in random illustrations. Um, and you know, this is another trend in web design using kind of this illustrative look. Um, and there's a few styles within this plugin, but let's say we say like business. And as soon as you click on it, uh, just like the material icons it's bringing in SVG format. Um, and so you can edit into, uh, or rather click into any one of these and change any of the colors if you wanted to and you can scale it up as much as you want. But what's also cool, if I bring that back up, is you can actually uh, set the background detail level. So if you want it to be pretty simple, you could say hidden, and you'll probably see some of these elements start to change down here. Um, and then there's also simple or detailed, and that just kind of uh, saves you some time from having to bring it in and then go in and delete some of those elements that just, if it's too busy for you. But you can change the style and, and filter up here. And, um, you know, it, it, for the most part, like uh, we haven't found that uh, we can't find at least half of our illustrations from here or at least, you know, 90 percent of them with uh, as like a placeholder before we go in and get some more custom designs. But because they're SVG, we can actually uh, you customize those colors to match our client or the project's um, brand. Um, but you can also set the color before you put it in there. So if you know we wanted to use the blue sky primary blue, you can see now that everything is is based off on that color. So if I drag this in here, it's actually using those colors, and that is one of my favorite parts of it because generally when you you know bring in an illustration, there are like 50 or 100 colors, um, and usually it's like three or four primary colors, and then like a hundred different variations that you have to go create. Um, and so you can see it's done a pretty good job of bringing in uh, those colors and, and basing it on that just that one color. Um, and so you can't change you know all of them, but you could always select this and see all the colors listed here and get it, uh, kind of tweak it to where you want it. But 
That's the last plugin we've used. It's great for placeholders and just kind of fitting into that trend when uh, the design calls for it. But hopefully that gave you some ideas and some tools that will help you uh, get a better control over Figma and really streamline your projects. Uh, if you got anything out of this video, please be sure to like it and subscribe down below. It really helps us out. And be sure to check the links uh, down below to get access to those tools. Thanks for watching.